before we get into this episode, there's something that might be of interest that I wanted to tell you about. Seen and Heard, who uh, run this podcast, have been asked by Scotland Food and Drink to undertake a strategic review of the Scotland Food and Drink Excellence Awards. Now, these Excellence Awards have been going for almost 20 years and are a huge mainstay of the food and drink sector. But it's time to ensure that they're still relevant. So if you have ever been involved in the Scotland Food and Drink Excellence Awards, or even if you've ever had an opinion about them, we would love for you, please, to complete our survey. So if you go to the On Farm Twitter, which is at on underscore farm uk and click the link in the bio there will be a tab in there that will take you to the survey and it should only take you a very short while to complete but we would be enormously grateful i'm anna davis welcome to this latest edition of the on farm podcast that's farming agriculture and rural matters so yeah we're really excited to be at craigie's farm deli and cafe today just on the outskirts of edinburgh We've just walked past two enormous strawberries, and I mean enormous, about 10 foot tall. Uh, and I think they're used in the summertime for selling strawberries and cream and all sorts of delicious things. But we're on our way down to the polytunnels with John, who's going to explain to us what goes on in here, um, and we can ask him any questions. So over to you, John. Yeah, I'll come on in, kids, into this tunnel here, and uh, let's have a look to see what's growing in here. John's quite seasoned at this, so he's, there's probably not very many questions that he hasn't heard and can't answer, so we're, we're in safe hands here. So, does anyone guess what these might be? Apples. Yep. Not apples, no. Like Do you know? Wild raspberries. They're not wild raspberries, they are raspberries. So these raspberries, are they're not growing in the ground, they're growing in, in pots. They're growing in... Compost? A, it's, it's like a compost. It's coir, it's crushed up coconut shells. Yeah, so well, well done. I get immense satisfaction from doing rec visits, you know, just seeing kids learning and uh, about farming and how their food's produced, and I think it's, it's, it's really important. And also, do you see here there's a pipe yeah. running along? Yeah, that's for the water. That's for the water. And what else do you think might be in the water? What do you think raspberries fertilizer. might need? Need kinds, different kinds of fertiliser and nutrients, yeah. Um, plant food? And plant food. Yep. So it's basically plant food that kind of comes into the, uh, in through these little pipes into the raspberries to keep them growing. Right. Come on then. Let's go and have a look at some some veggies. We'll head this way. How do you feel when you see children and they come and their knowledge level about farming might have been low at first, but you can really see them as they grow? How do you feel about that? I've I've always always kind of wondered, uh, you know why teachers are teachers think it must be a really tough job which I'm sure it is but you know there must be a, a, an immense amount of satisfaction kind of learning and giving knowledge to someone and I suppose it's exactly the same when when you know the kids come out onto the farm they don't know how things are growing how the food's growing and uh, how animals are looked after okay gather around is it cauliflower we've got lots of guesses here we've got cauliflower lettuce anyone else want to guess something Oh, like I heard I it. Even yeah. So, if you want to look under the leaves and see if you can find any Brussels sprouts. Oh yeah. You see them in the meadow. Yeah. yeah. Who likes Brussels sprouts? Not me. Never tried them. <laughs> Never tried them. I do not like them. Why not? I don't like them. Uh, they're lovely. Mm-hmm. Lots of nutrients in them. But you can see there, there's a pipe. Yeah. Yeah. So. If we need to put any water in, then we can put water in as well. Okay, let's just jump over some of these and just see what else we've got (laughs) growing here. So being able to pass that knowledge over to the kids and seeing them sucking it in like a sponge is really satisfying. So, Emmy, that's kind of a natural lead on to speak to you. Um, Can you tell us, first of all, who you are and what you do, and then we'll talk to you about your experiences with RET. I'm Emmy Petrie. I currently work at Queensferry Primary School in South Queensferry, um, and this is my fourth year teaching. So you've been involved with RET for for a couple of years now. Um, What do you see in the children and by way of benefit after they've been on a farm visit? It's nice to see 
how their knowledge of where food comes from and it's kind of knowing when food is in season and when to pick food and where it comes from so that um, kind of story behind food and being knowledgeable and kind of passing that knowledge on to their families and when they're going shopping they can say oh I know where that food comes from so yeah and do you see a difference in them after they've been on a farm visit yeah they are more knowledgeable and they're more excited to try different foods I know that I've done tastings with children and just from the knowledge that they've got from that food they are more willing to try new foods which is really exciting yeah and what about you do you enjoy it as well yeah I love it and it's nice to see the smiling faces and they're so excited to be around farms and it's knowledge without them really realizing it it's a bit of fun for them but they're as you said picking it up like sponges and just really grasping it and understanding where food comes from these rows here have been harvested yeah because you spotted it so these are harvested cauliflowers let's go over and see if we can find a cauliflower that's not been picked yet so this one is going to be a cauliflower in sort of February time so it's still got a lot of growing to go it's almost like a cabbage isn't it it's the same family uh, and the heart will grow into a cauliflower and it'll be ready ready to pick in, in February March time uh, whereas we've got other varieties that are uh, grow at different times and you can see there behind us that we've been harvesting for selling in the shop uh, right now okay do you all like cauliflowers yeah yeah, yeah. oh a bit more mixed the more people like cauliflower than Brussels sprouts. So if, if I was a primary school teacher, I, I don't think I have the patience. But if I was, <laughs> but I wasn't yet involved with RET, what would you say to, to try and persuade me? I think children need to know where food comes from and I think it's a really important thing, especially for the future and being sustainable. So as a teacher, a lot of our work is to do with sustainability within Scotland and I think this is a really good opportunity for children to understand where food comes from and being knowledgeable um, and be able to work with local places to understand these things. Yeah. Just being able to understand and it almost sparks that curiosity around where food comes from and then that knowledge starts to build on that curiosity and having such like wonderful people like farmers being able to share this and share their passion with these children so those children get really excited about these things it's really nice okay so this is us at the at the chickens now that one's staring at me it's staring at you now this one here is an Isa brown so what color of egg do you think get lays white brown the brown ones yeah and then the Wessex, white. the white ones, white, yeah. <laughs> That's what you think it's saying to you. Go away. Close the window, please. It's cold in here. <laughs> Ma! Ma! Did you see a chicken's bum? I wouldn't get too close to it. <laughs> yeah. So, how many eggs do you think a chicken will maybe lay in in a week? About three. Eight, no. Seven. Seven, close. Six. Six, yep. So they'll have one day off, yeah? <laughs> Usually a, a chicken will lay about six eggs in a week. And when they start off, a young chicken is called a pullet. So that's like a wow. teenager. But as the chicken gets older and older, the eggs will get bigger and bigger. Okay, so who all likes eggs? Fried. Fried. Scrambled. Scrambled. Toasted. Toasted. Toasted egg. <laughs> Toast and egg. John, Emmy talked there about sustainability of food production, but farmers are involved in an awful lot more than just food production when it comes to sustainability. So can you tell us briefly about some of the things that you do here in, in that regard? Yeah, I mean, that's an important part of the uh, school visit. I mean, it's not really something we went into in detail today. Uh, but, you know, biodiversity and how, how the farmers uh, uh, farm with the environment and, and, the, uh, and nature around about them as well is, is really important. And, you know, it's a, a, you know, it's a key message that, that we need to get across. Absolutely. And um, we're also joined um, by Sarah, who is, uh, what's your job title, Sarah? Learning and Development Coordinator with RET. With RET. Mm -hmm. And so is sustainability quite a big part of, of what you work with, with 
children and teachers on? Yeah, sustainability is becoming increasingly important and we're doing a lot of work with secondary school teachers around issues concerned with the sustainability of food production and it's not just secondary school teachers, we also do a lot of training with primary school teachers to make sure that they're aware of food and sustainability. Yes, yeah. And uh, I heard you mention, I was slightly eavesdropping, that you had been speaking to I think 40 uh, senior school pupils today. Um, what, What were you talking to them about? Uh, Well, today we were looking at seasonality and covering some topical issues like food miles and we also did some cooking with seasonal vegetables. So the focus today was cooking with parsnips. Oh, excellent. (laughs) (laughs) Got an aeroplane going overhead. Sorry, folks. (laughs) We'll just wait for it to pass. There we go. Yes, exactly. I think it's really important probably to mention two things here. Everything we've talked about today is really important, but I suppose two key things um, that spring to mind for me is one is that everything that RET does is free of charge for schools. Is that right? Yeah, that's quite right. And that does mean that a lot more schools can engage with us. So we offer everything that we can free of charge. Uh, So that includes class talks, farm visits and teacher training. It's all free to access and can be done online through the uh, website. Amazing. And and how teachers may ask how it fits, all of the work of RET fits in with the curriculum of excellence. So how mm-hmm. how is the synergy there? Uh, okay, well, everything RET does links in with the curriculum. Uh, the links are through health and well-being and social studies and science and the STEM topics, so science, technology, engineering and maths. And RET can link into all of them. Uh, John's demonstrated some links in today through health and well-being looking at the types of vegetables he grows Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of links and everything we do is linked into the curriculum yeah Sarah you must work with a lot of farmers I know some farmers um, host tours and visits like John does and others will go into classrooms sometimes to speak to pupils in in there so how does that those visits uh, in classrooms contrast with with what we've been doing today out and about at Craigie's uh, well, we're really lucky in Scotland that all our, volunte- all our farmers are actually volunteers, so they give up their time to do these visits and talks for us, which is absolutely fantastic. When they go into school, they often bring props with them. So if you've got an arable farmer, they might bring grain samples and some stocks for the kids to look at. Dairy people sometimes bring clusters. So w- if you come out on a farm, you get to see the sights and smells, and when we go into the classroom we try and bring some of those sights and smells with us yeah Uh, and it's it's whatever works best for that particular school or that particular teacher and and class yes it really depends on the requirements and needs of the school and we'll try and uh, tailor the visits accordingly absolutely and um how many children benefit from the work of RET and its its volunteer farmers in, in an average year Well, it's around about 70,000, which is absolutely fantastic. And that number grows year on year as the interest in where food comes from is increasing, particularly as uh, issues around sustainability increase and people have more interest and want to find out more about where their food's coming from. Yes, and uh, do you have enough volunteer farmers to provide all of the uh, that education well we're always looking for more so if anyone's interested please do get in touch <laughs> excellent I w- hopefully you will hopefully you will so any questions of the chickens yep how do they know to lay the eggs in the egg hatch and not just to do it anywhere that's a good question their, their natural instincts is to try and find somewhere nice to sit in a nest and lay their egg so we try and make the nest boxes as, as nice as possible so that it encourages them to, to lay their egg in the nest box. But you will get some chickens that will, will lay them in, in random places. So every every day when we're checking them, we've just to go around the, their coop and just check to see if there's any eggs lying anywhere else. That was an excellent question, I thought. I've always wondered that myself. How do they know where to go? Now John's told us. Superb. John, from your years of experience... What do you think it is that, that makes it so enjoyable and that other farmers would also experience if they were to volunteer with RET? It's a real, you know, it's a re- really, um, you know, there's not many things that you do that you get, you know, such, such reward for. There's nothing more rewarding than, you know, getting kids that have come, maybe come from an inner city deprived uh, background that have probably never been out on a farm before. And, and, and seeing these, um, you know, as the teachers might sort of call them little terrors, really just kind of, uh, you know, their jaws drop and uh, just, you know, they take it all in and, and everything you tell them is, is a fantastic experience. And then at the other end of the 
scale, you know, speaking to uh, kids from upper end of school, so senior school, that are you know, starting to make choices on what career paths they want to go down. So getting them out onto the farm and kind of you know showing them the different options and the different uh, um, you know, that are all connected to the ground and food production, um, you know, it, it, it's immensely ro- rewarding. And I also think that, um, in my experience anyway, that sometimes we see or hear things in the press about farming and farmers that are misleading. So for me, I feel that it's really important that farmers have a voice and RET is one of the ways in which they're enabled to have a voice to, to tell people what really happens and what life is really like on farm and all of the benefits that farmers are delivering for all of us. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've got to stand up and kind of uh, be a lot better at communicating. You know, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, everyone would have had a connection to the, the land in some way or another, whether it be an auntie that used to go and help pick berries or an uncle that used to go and help with the potato harvest. Uh, but, you know, through mechanisation, all these connections have been lost. Uh, so, you know, farmers do probably have to be better at how they communicate uh, you know, the great work that they do. So these are our goats. Why do they have yellow tags on their ears? That's a good question. It's a law, the law that all animals uh, have a identif- some form of identification. So it's in case there's any disease breaks out in the country so that you can trace where the animals are. So all these animals, the number on it relates to a number on a passport. So just like you have a passport for when you go off on holiday somewhere, if the goats or the sheep or the pigs or any of the, 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 the livestock like that have to move off the farm to go anywhere else to another farm or to the market, they've got to have the passport with them as well. Um, does any of the goats eat vegetables on this farm? Yeah, so they're really good at sort of eating up any of the scraps and things like that. So um, they'll get a small amount of uh, cereal, so something with grain and some nutrients in it in the morning, just like if you were having a plate of porridge. And then the rest of the diet's made up, so eating grass and uh, any vegetables that, that we, we don't sell in the shop. So do you want to go and have a look at the pigs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah come on then, let's go and see the pigs. Sara, could you describe in one or perhaps two sentences, if you need to, the essence of RET? Well, RET is essentially bringing the countryside to the classroom through farm visits, classroom talks and resources to support teaching in schools. And we've seen firsthand uh, a farm visit at West Cray Farm today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the resources that are available for teachers? Yeah, RET have a, an online portal that teachers can access. Uh, and this has resources on it that RET has produced, as well as resources from a number of other organisations across Scotland. There's over 800 different resources on there and they're free to access and download. And they're all curricular linked. In an ideal world, a school would come on a farm visit or have a speaker and then follow that up with something back in school, utilising yeah. the resources from the portal. So the learning journey can continue even when the teacher doesn't have a farm at his or her side to, yes, to help. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we can also support schools with cookery sessions to build on the learning that might have taken place during their farm visit. OK, guys. So can you all guess what these are? Pigs. Pigs, yeah. <laughs> Very inquisitive pigs. I think I'm going to get eaten here. <laughs> so they're here for, for, for meat production. They probably have a bit, bit of a shorter life than, than what they would if, if, if they weren't getting used for that. But, you know, they have quite a happy life. So what, what different cuts of meat do you think we get from, from the pigs? Pork. Pork, yep. Bacon. Bacon, yes. The other thing about pigs are that they're, they're very, very clean animals. So the pigs get a bad name for being dirty. But you can see here, you know, at this end, we're standing at the toilet end. And then up there, the straw is really clean. From a very young age, they'll do their toilet in the one area and then where they're eating their food and where they're, where they're going to lie down and sleep they won't, won't do any toilet there so they keep it nice and clean I think John, pigs get a bit of a bad reputation for being smelly as well probably a you know, similar thing but they're not, are they at all? No, not too bad no. at all, are they? No yeah. Who so likes a bacon sandwich? Full show of hands, yeah. nearly a full show of hands <laughs> RET is free, as we've discussed, to, to all teachers. Um, so how do you manage to sustain that? Where does your funding come from? 
Okay, so RET are a charity and we get our funding from many different sources. Uh, NFD is able to donate to us as a charity and we have various events throughout the year where we do fundraising to raise funds uh, at a local level to deliver farm visits in particular areas. RET is unbiased, so all the information that RET provides is unbiased. So we are out here to provide the facts and the information about how food production works and it's up to people to decide what they want to eat at the end of the day. Can you spell out the website for us so that people are in no doubt about where they need to go to find these resources? Yeah, the RET website is www.ret.org.uk. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Emmy. You do an amazing job as a teacher and thank you for engaging with Rhett. Um, John, you've been involved for so many years. You're really dedicated and I think everybody will appreciate that. And Sarah, thank you. You're, you've been a fountain of knowledge, so really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what did you like the best? Probably the chickens. The chickens? And why is that? They're just kind of smart. They are, actually. Yeah. And what did you like the best? The piggies. The pigs, yeah, why do you like the pigs best? Because they're funny. They're funny, they are. They're very entertaining animals, I think, and very intelligent as well, aren't they, John? Yeah. Yeah. So did no one like my Brussels sprouts the best? No. Oh, I'm very proud of my Brussels sprouts. (laughs) As we've heard today, RET is all about bringing farmers and the working countryside and its practices to life for young people. Uh, We've had an amazing tour and I think everything that we've learnt is, to me, is really important that children understand where their food comes from, what farmers do when they're producing that food, but also what farmers do uh, to protect uh, Scotland's world-renowned countryside. So it's been an amazing day and I think we've all thoroughly enjoyed it. So we've heard today about all of the benefits that RET delivers for farmers, for school teachers and for school children. Uh, And we also heard that they're a charity, so they rely on fundraising. So if having listened to the podcast today, you think they're a worthy charity and you'd like to support their work, we'd love if you could please do so. So just visit the the website on www.ret.org.uk and you can find out all you need to know. Thank you so much. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do give us your thoughts and views and suggestions for future episodes on Twitter. Uh, and the handle is at on underscore farm UK. So please give us your thoughts and views.